Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the Elemental Maker. Today, I wanted to uh, share with you this pretty cool old piece of uh, mining history found at a yard sale here. This is what they call a carbide lamp or lantern. And it's pretty interesting. Basically, you have two parts to it. A little water tank that you would fill up with water. And then a reservoir that would hold calcium carbide. And you have an adjustable drip right here. And as this thing would drip water in here, it would react with the calcium carbide, forming acetylene gas and calcium hydroxide. So the calcium hydroxide would just be left in there, as you can probably see, a bunch of crap. Over the years, calcium hydroxide, I'm, I'm sure it absorbs CO2 from the air, and it's now calcium carbonate, which is harmless enough. But you can see the acetylene would come up through there, out to here, and you spark it, and that would create a bright little tip of acetylene, and you could adjust the flame size by uh, how much water was actually coming in contact. Pretty, pretty neat little system. Uh, this thing's totally out of commission, though. It's missing the burner tip and a flint. The seals, the seals actually are in pretty good shape, so my goal here is to restore the uh, the flint. I'm just going to steal a little flint out of an old Bic lighter. And these tips are freaking impossible to get. So my hope is I can uh, machine a part on my lathe to fit the tip. Um, now the trouble is I can't find any specifications online about what the actual orifice diameter was for that little flame to come out of. And I'm also not sure what material they used. It was probably some kind of ceramic, but I'll hopefully just be able to make something out of aluminum, maybe steel. That'll at least uh, let it work for a little while. So let's uh, let's see if we can get this thing working. Pretty pretty neat old piece of junk. So just a little background on this awesome compound. Calcium carbide, like tons of other freaking awesome scientific discoveries, was invented by accident. Well, wasn't the invention but the first commercial method of manufacturing it was found by accident. Guy, Thomas Wilson, uh, I think it was around 1890, was uh, looking for a way to make aluminum from ore using electric arcs. And he kind of had a little bit of a process down. He wasn't making enough to be viable. So he was trying to get a more reactive metal that he could reduce the alumina with to make aluminum. You know, one of your react more reactive metals is calcium. You can reduce alumina, make aluminum. So he tried reacting dehydrated lime, so calcium oxide, with carbon, which, you know, makes sense, a smelting process, you're taking the oxygen away, making CO2, getting left with pure calcium. But what ended up happening in there is the calcium combined with excess carbon and formed calcium carbide. Now, he thought he had calcium, because it reacted with metal, so, or uh, water rather. So he was super excited, thought, holy crap, I made calcium, this is gonna be great. But when he dropped it in water, gave off a totally different odor than was anticipated and the flame also burnt sooty which was not indicative of hydrogen that should have been produced so they enlisted some dude from a local university i think the university of north carolina and they they realized they they made calcium carbide but at the time there were no no uses for the shit because nobody had it nobody knew how to use it and basically he had to go around and figure out ways that this stuff could be used. It has a super hot flame. So the really interesting thing is, at the time, the gas lighting was pretty poor quality. You know, they, they couldn't, they didn't have any super bright burning flames that could really light effectively. So with calcium carbide producing acetylene gas, he was able to market this as a new gas for lighting. And it became hugely successful it also was immediately adopted for uh, metal cutting and torching and welding. So just, just like Teflon, you know, discovered by accident, but nowadays there's like no manufacturing process in the world that doesn't utilize Teflon at some point along its manufacturing line, whether it's in bushings or bearings or for a reaction vessel. Same, same thing here. It's calcium carbide isn't used quite as much today. Uh, you know, there's, more effective gases, easier to handle gases than acetylene. But if you go to any junkyard ever, you will see oxyacetylene tanks. 
well, oxygen and acetylene tanks. It's it's super useful for cutting because it's it's so portable and so effective. It has such a hot flame, especially when it's combined with oxygen. So that is why miners started using it in their headlamps because one, it was easy to control the drip rate and control your gas, and two, it produced a super bright flame. So they were able to see what the heck they were doing in the mines finally, versus you know kind of mining in the dark. Not not really the dark, but the the lamps they had weren't nearly as effective as uh, an acetylene lamp. So pretty interesting history behind this stuff. It's really cool, and uh, if you ever get some, it's a bit of fun to play with. So you can see in my reaction vessel here, it's actually producing calcium hydroxide, which uh, yeah, it's caustic. Woo, look at that one. <laughs> now, if you find an old mining lamp, the cool thing is the, the calcium hydroxide will have absorbed carbon dioxide out of the air and basically it just becomes calcium carbonate chalk. And that's actually the principle used in uh, CO2 scrubber. So if you ever use a uh, scuba rebreathing system, I think they actually use lithium hydroxide in those because it's a little more effective at absorbing CO2. But once this dried up and if I let it expose to air for a significant amount of time, I'm not sure how long, it would actually convert from calcium hydroxide to calcium carbonate. So pretty interesting stuff. So it looks like I'm going to have to take the reflector off to get a measurement on here. Surprised it's not seized on there. I wonder if it's a uh, probably gray stainless. Point two one five. Let's see if it reduces down there. Looks like it does reduce. So uh, apparently these things are a friction fit, which I found kind of surprising. I know this is a butterfly brand, which was apparently a cheap Chinese knockoff. I probably wouldn't even even grabbed it had I known that. Some of them have threaded inserts. Some of them are just a friction fit. And apparently an old miner's trick was to just smear a little toothpaste around it and plop it in there. It creates an air seal and it's a water soluble uh, sealant. So don't have to worry about leaving gunked up residue in there that'll never come off. Given the measurement there, I'm gonna try to machine a little something up and see if we can't get this thing working. I left this neck on here just so we can uh, have a little positive interference at the front and not lose the tip. Hopefully we now have a tip that'll fit. So we got our little tip fresh off the lathe and the moment of truth. It's a nice little interference fit. I think that might work. Time to grab the toothpaste. <laughs> Let's see, uh, see if we can get this sucker to fire up. I'm just going to clean the reservoir out, hit it with a screwdriver, get rid of all that gunk in there. Let's look at all the old uh, calcium carbonate in there. This thing definitely saw some use, given that we're in, uh, or at least pretty close to coal country. I'm sure this was used in one of the coal mines. I'd love to know uh, some of the stories behind this thing. It's probably seen some wild shit. Calcium carbide here. Getting pretty severely uh, oxidized. Well, I guess not oxidized, but uh, moisture is getting in. And slowly turning it to crud. Especially on a humid as hell day like today. That'll be plenty to get her started. Make sure the dripper works first, huh? Probably important. There we go. This thing just might work. I can hear it. It's gonna let that sit and flush any remaining air out of the system. And my first ignition of this is gonna be with a lighter because I do not want to be too close to it, just given the potential danger of it blowing up. All right, moment of truth. Holy shit. <laughs> See, we get that going a little faster. Wow. All right, well, I think my orifice is a little too big. <laughs> Damn it. Oh, look at the soot coming off of that thing. Oh my God.
wow, my ceiling is going to be black. That thing does throw some light out though, even with an improper tip. That's a good bit of flame. That is wild. I cannot believe that. Alright, so it looks like to get this thing to really work right, I'm going to need to get some smaller drill bits. I wonder if I could uh, punch, punch that hole in a little bit. That reaction vessel gets hot. See why it has a bit of rubber on there. Whew! Stanky! I'm gonna try taking a, an automatic center punch to the uh, the hole a little bit and trying to reduce the size of hair. So if I get right on the edge there, I can hopefully knock this hole in a bit and reduce the orifice size. It certainly looks smaller. Let's uh, see how she works now. Oh, that looks about right. Holy shit. Wow. Unreal. It's not perfect, but man, is that a... That's significantly better. Some old technology. But man, is that cool. There's a guy on YouTube, uh, I think his channel is Exploring Abandoned Mines. And often in the mines, uh, you'll see what he calls carbide writing. And the miners actually used to use these carbide lamps to write on the walls. You can see the amount of soot it puts out. Also made it pretty versatile to actually mark stuff. Not really sure how they did this exactly. <laughs> well, I think you get the point. Yeah, the miners used to write on the, the mine walls and indicate important stuff or usually just how many carts they sent up. There's the inside of the reaction vessel. You can still hear it. Pretty freaking cool. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this. It's not my usual video, but I thought it was uh, something pretty cool to bring back to life. And... <laughs> Surprised we got it working so quickly. I definitely need to get some smaller drill bits so I can get this nozzle to the correct size. So if any of you guys happen to know what the correct uh, diameter for the, the nozzle orifice there actually is, uh, please drop a comment below because I, I really want to know. Um, that way I can produce this part correctly and really get this thing working as it should. Well, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Definitely isn't my normal style of video, but hopefully you guys maybe learned something or, uh, or at least thought it was interesting. So hope you enjoyed. Have a great one.